Hello, Patriots, and welcome to the channel. On today's program, we're going to be discussing what in the world is Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir thinking with many of these policies he's pushing in his agenda during the past several months. I remember when I was a teenager and I'd go out and do some knucklehead thing, my father would sit me down and say, boy, what were you thinking? And of course, everyone who's been a teenager knows there is no good answer when your father asks you that question. But this is something we must ask with some of the policies that Governor Bashir has been pushing on Kentuckians. And we're going to talk about four of these today and why these are horrible ideas. Well, the first thing we're going to talk about is this idea of vaccines. Governor Bashir, at nearly every single one of his free press conferences that the media gives him nearly daily, he keeps pushing this idea, until there's a vaccine, I'm not going to reopen the whole state. Until there's a vaccine, I'm not going to let everybody go back to work. Until there's a vaccine, I may not even let the kids go back to school next year. Vaccine, vaccine, vaccine. We've documented this many times here on the channel. Well, think about this. Do we really need a vaccine for a virus that has anywhere between a 98 and a 99.8 percent survival rate. I mean, do you realize if you're younger than about 70 years old, the recovery rate is greater than 99 percent. Do we really require a vaccine that has such an incredibly high recovery rate before he's allowed Kentuckians just to go back to work, go back to school, go back to the stores, just go back to our lives with something that has a recovery rate as high as 99.8%. Do you realize that more people recover from COVID-19 without a vaccine than recover from the regular flu and that has a vaccine? Don't know why he's insisting so much that we have to have that when, one, they may never discover it. They haven't discovered a vaccine for a lot of these other things. And two, why is that required when it has such an incredibly high survival rate? Now let's talk about the second thing, and that's the unemployment issue. Kentucky right now has an um, unemployment rate of a little greater than 45% of our entire workforce. Do you realize a few weeks ago we reported Kentucky's unemployment, uh, people who had filed for it was greater than 700,000. Then a few days ago we said it was greater than 800,000. Well, as of this recording, there are now more than 927,000 Kentuckians that have had to file for unemployment insurance uh, because of his continued policy saying, I'm not going to let you open up a lot of these places. What is open up has got to be cut back on their staff, only 50% staff in some places and less in others. And some places still can't open at all. This has had terrible results upon the Kentucky economy. And Kentucky now rates last. We rate 50th of all 50 states and our unemployment rate per capita, meaning the governors of all other 49 states have done a better job at protecting the employment rates in their states and they're dealing with the same virus that we are dealing with. We are seeing the results of some horrible policy decisions and some highly questionable actions from Governor Bashir. But he's saying, well, this year I may have to call for a special session of the General Assembly this summer because we don't have enough money because the people aren't buying stuff because they don't have a job. And so the stores aren't paying taxes either. So uh, he's thinking about calling a special session of the General Assembly to do one of two things. Either first, he says, listen, you're going to have to cut a whole bunch of services or you're going to have to raise taxes. Well, both of these are the wrong answer. You know what the right answer is? The right answer is let Kentucky go back to work. When you let Kentucky go back to work, Kentuckians are going to earn money and pay taxes. They're going to buy things and therefore have to pay taxes. That is the solution. But he keeps saying, no, the solution is to either cut services, raise taxes, or he loves to talk about, we need another federal bailout. We already had uh, some money sent to us from the federal government through the CARES Act. 
coronavirus aid and economic relief stimulus, something to that account is how that first package of money. Now, what did he do with this first bundle of money we were given? Did he use it all to really help Kentucky's economy and maybe those unemployed uh, to help Kentucky businesses? No, he spent more than $112 million on contact tracing. He hired 700 people and has wasted $112 million on this online program for basically a website. Uh, this is not a good use of the money that was already spent and sent to us specifically to help with economic recovery. So if the federal government sends us another $100 million, is he going to do that again? I mean, he's already wasting it. The idea that we need the federal government to bail us out and we need a bailout, somebody else pay for my bad decisions. This is a liberal philosophy that others have to pay for your bad decisions. America's greatness was built upon self-reliance and self-government instead of this nanny state that we see being pushed over by Governor Bashir and those on the left. And he's preventing the people of Kentucky from having access to our own and best resource, which is our people generating their own income. But we see this is a biblical uh, account of such a thing has happened before. In the book of 1 Samuel, chapter number 14, verses 24 through 30. I encourage you to read that. It's only six verses. It tells the story of King Saul, wicked King Saul. And he wanted to get certain things done, and he wanted his way of having them done. And he forbid any of the people of Israel from eating anything until he got things done, what he wanted done, and got it done his way. Well, the people suffered greatly. And then Jonathan, his son, he ignored that. He actually went out and got some honey to eat, and it did him much good. And he says, listen, we would have been able to do much better as a people if this king, his own father, had not forbidden the people from using their own greatest resources. We see this whole biblical principle being played out once again. So we're seeing horrible policies be enacted about this idea that we have to have a vaccine. And number two, some of the unemployment rates and what's caused that and what the real solution and best solution would be. Now let's look at the third thing, and this is virus testing. Oh, Governor Bashir is pushing this hard and heavy. You would think it was the be all, you'd think it was the cure uh, as far as he is just pushing testing. Uh, and now the reason he keeps saying, oh, we got all these more and more cases is because there's more and more testing. There's been more testing for this than for any other sickness ever in our entire nation. Uh, if you would have tested for the swine flu or any other of the viruses over these past several years, as vehemently as is being done now, well, we would have had a bunch of results for that too. Now let's think about this. These test results are not always what they appear to be. I want to play a clip, clip for you now from Dr. Deborah Bricks. She is the official White House Task Force Coordinator for the coronavirus. And notice what she says about the accuracy of these tests to do and I'm just going to do another 30 seconds on testing. These tests are not 100% sensitive or specific. And I'm going to go over this over and over again. So if you have 1% of your population infected and you have a test that's only 99% specific, that means that when you find a positive, 50% of the time it will be a real positive, and 50% of the time it won't be. And so we see here the person who is the very head for the White House, the coordinator of the virus task force, says, listen, half the time this thing is going to tell you you've got it when you don't actually have it. I think that's part of the reason why Governor Bashir keeps pushing this idea, hey, uh, you're asymptomatic, you have no symptoms at all, but you actually have it. You know the reason why he keeps saying that is because these tests, half the time, they say you have it, and you don't. And that's why you don't have any symptoms, because you don't have it. Now, let's think also about these tests. I had mentioned this before, but it bears repeating. Let's say you go to the store and you get this test. And then before you go home, you do a little shopping over at Kroger. You might have been exposed at something that somebody else touched 
when you were touching one of the products at the store. Or let's say you stop over at Walmart on your way home. You could have caught it from somebody over there. Or you stop at the gas station. Who knows how many people have been using that gas pump between the time that you took the test and the time that you get home. Or you get some mail at your house. You know how many people actually touch a piece of mail before it shows up in your mailbox? All of these things and a million other you could come up with all means the test that you took and before you even get home that day, that test is pointless because you might have been exposed multiple different ways and therefore you need to get tested again. And if you get tested and it says you have it, it's really only a 50% chance that you do have it. These tests are costing Kentucky tons of money. Again, money that should be used to help Kentucky businesses that should be, would better be used to help those that haven't got any unemployment now for months, but instead we're using it for these tests, which are half the time wrong and can be quickly rendered pointless. Now let's talk about the fourth and the final thing, which is the rioting that is going on in our state, mostly over in Louisville. Uh, some of police officers have described some areas of Louisville as literally a war zone uh, where people, their streets are blocked off, they're having their businesses destroyed, uh, they're being personally attacked. And what's Governor Bashir doing about the different rioters? He's like, riots? What riots? There's nobody rioting. There's no violence going on. Just turning a complete blind eye to what is happening. I mean, there's all kinds of video where people's cars are being attacked, their businesses are having bricks thrown, thrown, uh, thrown through them, and many other things, and he's completely ignoring it as if it is not happening. Now, the First Amendment to the Constitution gives us, specifically guarantees that we have the right to come together and we have the right to protest, but notice it says that you have the right to peaceably assemble. And that's the word that's been left out in this whole thing, peaceably assemble. And the different riots that are going on right now and the violence that is accompanying that and how it is putting a risk to really life and liberty and property, all of these things are in direct violation of the principles from the civil rights movement that Martin Luther King Jr. set down. They're violating all of the things he set down to actually make an effective change in society and hurting the validity of their own cause that they're protesting for. There's another biblical principle which is in, comes into play here. It comes from the book of 1 Kings chapter number 1. If you read that, it tells the story of Adonijah. Adonijah was the son of King David. King David is old at this point, and Adonijah decides, you know what? I want to make myself king. So he gets all these people to support him, and he gets people to trumpet out in the street and say, hey, I'm the king. And what does King David do about this? Well, in verse 6 of chapter 1, it says he does nothing. He just ignores it entirely. And so what's the result? It encourages that behavior. It enables that, and it grows, and it caused a much bigger problem that caused a whole lot of effort to get the kingdom back under control in the rule of law and order. We're seeing that Governor Bashir is also violating this biblical principle by doing that. So let's do a little review of what we talked about today. What in the world could Governor Bashir be thinking? First of all, with these riots, ignoring them does not make them go away. It is not making the situation better. It is making it worse. Number two, testing. Testing is expensive. Half the time it's wrong and it can be rendered completely pointless in just a very few actions before you even get home after the test. We got unemployment, 900,000 plus Kentuckians now out of work, 45% unemployment rate. The solution isn't raising taxes. The solution isn't cutting services. And the solution isn't getting a bailout. The solution is letting Kentuckians go back to work. And finally, this idea of a vaccine is required before we can allow Kentuckians to go back to their lives with a virus that has anywhere between a 98 and a 99.8% survival and recovery rate. Kentucky deserves a governor that has far better common sense than what we have right now. I cannot wait until the 2023 governor election when we can choose a new ticket that will hopefully have a lot more common sense. 
Well, that's what we're talking about this week. Make sure that you uh, subscribe and hit the little bell icon so you can be notified the next time there's a video. Until next time, I'm Lee Watts for Patriot Point. Stand strong, Kentucky.